Aloha. If you could do something good for the planet that was more fun than what you're doing today and would save you money, would you be interested? Yes. What if I told you that by driving an electric car that was more affordable and more convenient than the car you drive today, you could make that change, would you switch? I know it sounds like an audacious plan, and it is, but I'm here, standing here to today to tell you that this plan is a reality. It's happening in multiple places around the world, and I'm proud to tell you that Hawaii is taking a leading role in helping the world drive electric. And I'm lucky enough to be in the middle of it, here in Hawaii, doing a job I love, where going into work feels more like a mission than a job. Let me tell you how I got so lucky. I'm a technology guy. I spent most of my career in the technology and software industries. And a few years ago, I had worked myself out of, <clears throat> excuse me, I had worked myself out of a job having grown and sold the last company I worked for. So I was thinking about what should I do next? And I looked around our beautiful state and I thought, renewable energy. I need to get involved in renewable energy. Why? Because I wanted to make a difference. And it seemed like uh, helping to get our state to reduce its imported oil would be a great way to start. See, I grew up in Arizona, but I married a beautiful island girl. And about 10 years ago, we moved to Hawaii to raise our family, not just for the natural beauty and wonderful climate, but for the unique blend of people and culture, where no group is a majority, everyone's a minority, and aloha is in the air but there's trouble in paradise. We are dangerously dependent on imported oil. We rely on oil for virtually everything. It even generates our electricity. Hawaii is the most geographically isolated set of islands in the world. We're 2,500 miles away from any place. And if there was a big unexpected disruption in our oil supply, virtually everything here would grind to a halt in just two weeks. Think about it, today, in Hawaii, right now, we're two weeks away from the Stone Age. We spend over $5 billion a year on imported oil. We're number one in the nation. Far ahead, numbers two and three, Alaska and Florida. Fortunately, in 2008, the state and federal governments, along with the utility, got together to form the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative which established a goal to get 70% of our energy from clean sources by the year 2030. That is a very aggressive goal. So that was the big picture back in 2008 when I was looking for my next job. And I explored a number of possibilities. I looked at biofuel from algae, solar, wind. And then in September, my copy of Wired Magazine came in the mail. And in this issue, there was an article about an innovative guy that had started a company with the goal of ending oil in about a decade or so. And in this issue, it talked about how oil and transportation are tightly linked. I learned that over half of all the world's oil goes into passenger vehicles. And this company's solution was to, to end oil was to run cars on renewable energy. A short time later, I heard that this company, Better Place, was looking to bring its electric car technology to Hawaii. And boom, the light bulb went on, and I thought, wow, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. And I made it my goal to be involved. And today, I'm leading our efforts in our beautiful state. So at the micro level, mission accomplished. But at the macro level, that is, of ending our dependence on oil, both here in Hawaii and globally, we're just getting started. So how do you make the world a better place? How do we end our dependence on oil? The challenge with electric cars is nothing new. Some of the very first cars on the roads in the 1890s were electric cars. They've always been more expensive and less convenient than gasoline cars. The solution is not a, the solution to uh, the problem of the high cost and, uh, for electric cars is not a $40,000 car that you can drive for two hours and plug in, that you drive, drive for two hours and plug in for eight. That's not a car at all. The solution is an electric car that's more affordable, more convenient, 
and more powerful than your gasoline car, an electric car that has no compromises on cost or convenience. So how do you overcome the range limitation and high cost of electric cars? Well, th thanks to a simple idea, you simply separate the battery from the car, both physically and financially. Now, I know this is a new concept for probably a lot of you, so I'm going to repeat it. You separate the battery from the car, both physically and financially. This is how it works. You see, the battery is the most expensive component of an electric car. It can make up half the cost. But what if you could buy an electric car without the cost of the battery? And the battery would be owned by a company that would sell you electric miles, kind of like the way you buy gasoline miles whenever you fill up your gas tank. And this electric miles company would install charging stations at home and at work and in public places. For example, this is at the Sheraton Waikiki. And so you could fill up at night and top up during the day as you drove about your business. And for those days where you were driving a long distance or like me had forgotten to plug in the night before, there'd be a network of automated stations that look kind of like car washes where you could pull in and switch your depleted battery for a freshly charged one in about five minutes. Well, then a funny thing would happen. Electric cars would have unlimited range. You could drive them anywhere that you drive a gas car today. By taking the single most expensive component of an electric car out of the purchase price, you make them less expensive and more convenient than your gasoline car. Unlike the cost of gasoline miles, which we all know are going up, the cost of electric miles are going down. Why? Battery technology is improving. Energy densities are going up. Manufacturing costs are going down. So unlike the next barrel of oil that we know is going to be more expensive, the next battery is always less expensive. So the question I want to ask you is, what curve do you want to be on? This isn't a pipe dream or a science experiment. Battery switch stations are installed and operating in Israel and Denmark and soon Australia and China. No need to wait for the magical 300-mile battery or the mythical 10-minute charger. The battery switchable electric car is a full-size five-passenger four-door sedan. No golf carts. The entire process is completely automated. You never even have to get out of your car. The battery switch station removes the depleted battery from your, from your car and inserts a freshly charged one. All of this takes about the same amount of time that it does to fill up your gas car today. Drive, switch, go. It's what makes an electric car a real car. So, that solves the issue of electrifying transportation. But what about running these cars on renewable energy? That's happening too. In Denmark, 750 windmills produce enough electricity to power the entire country's population on electric cars. In Israel, large solar energy power plants are being built in the southern desert. In Australia, a battery switch network is being built from Canberra through Sydney all the way to Brisbane. That's a stretch as long as the distance from San Diego to Seattle, powered 100% by renewable energy. And what about Hawaii? Hawaii is a wonderful place for electric cars for so many reasons. Our incredible dependence on oil, the high price of gasoline, our abundant renewable energy resources, we have them all. Solar, wind, wave, hydro, geothermal, and the natural size and geography makes them ideal for electric cars. The mass introduction of affordable, convenient, unlimited range electric cars will have a profound and disruptive effect on the way a number of things are done. Let me give you one example. In the not too distant future, you're gonna be able to buy a car, an electric car from Best Buy, and it'll be serviced by the Geek Squad. <laughs> it's happening today in Europe. 
It's going to inject new energy and resources into the world economy. It'll reduce, uh, it'll improve our environment thanks to reducing the enormous oil tax that we are all currently paying. There's a global move towards electric cars. China has named the electric car industry one of seven strategic industries that they plan to dominate globally, and they're investing over $15 billion in that goal. Every major automotive manufacturer on the planet has announced one or more models of cars with plugs. So, how long is this all gonna take? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but here's something to think about. China is already the world's largest producer of vehicles, over 50% larger than the US. Almost all of those cars destined for the domestic market. Recently, China announced a five-year plan to produce between 130 and 250 million new cars. At the low end of that target, 130 million cars, that's as many cars are going, that are gonna be put on the roads by the countries of the UK, Germany, Spain, France, and Italy. And China has never missed the low end target of one of their five year goals. At the high end, 250 million cars, that's as many cars that's gonna be added by all of Europe. And let's not forget about the growing economies and burgeoning middle classes of India, Brazil, Russia, that's another 130 million cars. At this rate, the total global car park is going to double from 800 million to 1.6 billion cars. 1.6 billion cars. What do you suppose all these, the effect of all these cars is going to be on the price of a gallon of oil, gas? Well, a general rule of thumb is for every 20 new cars on the road, we need another barrel of oil a day. At the low end of the target for China, that's another six million barrels a day. That's over half of Saudi Arabia's current production. At the high end of the target, 250 million, that's another Saudi Arabia. We're already at the edge of available supply. You know, you can have a strong economy or high energy prices, but you can't have both. What will the effect of all these new cars have on our environment? As oil keeps increasing, what will it do to our economy and to our planet. Can we afford to keep paying the high price of oil? Now, you may be wondering, won't the cost of all this infrastructure be really expensive? All these battery switch stations, these charging stations, and all the networking to bring it all together, won't that cost a lot? No, it won't. Let me tell you why. For any region, or a country that adopts the drive switch go model, the total cost of all of that infrastructure is equal to about what is spent on one week's usage of oil. Imagine, we can end our dependence on oil for the cost of one week's usage. It's doable, it's achievable, it's affordable, it's inevitable. Thank you.